So good afternoon, good morning, uh, good evening to some of you. My name is James Lang, and I am uh, the Senior Specialist on Gender-Based Violence for the Asian Development Bank, and I will be moderating this webinar. And uh, as we're waiting for more folks to uh, join the call, I would ask you to please um, put your, in, uh, you know, you can introduce yourself in the chat, tell us who you are and where you're from. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording with all of you via email. And it will also be uploaded onto the SVI, RI and Forum 2024 website. So um, this, the purpose of this webinar is to announce the SVRI Forum 2024. I hope you all know by now the dates of 21 through 25 October in Cape Town, South Africa. We will talk about the forum themes. We will discuss the abstract submission process and any questions around submission and share experiences on the forum from the past delegates. Um, we have a little bit of housekeeping to take care of for those of you that are online with us. Um, please introduce yourself, as I said, and please note that the, the webinar will be recording. This um, webinar will take place entirely in English, unfortunately. Um, so we do have a very packed agenda for today. Uh, we have very, uh, we have um, extraordinary uh, forum partners as a panel that I will introduce. And uh, please note that the panelists uh, will, their bios will be pasted in the chat. So please look at the chat as the um, webinar is ongoing and you can read more about our, our panelists and the contributions that are making, that are, uh, they are making to the field. So I'm going to hand over um, to Liz Dartnell, uh, the executive director of SVRI, to give a short presentation on the forum. Then we will have our panel discussion, uh, and you'll hear from all of our panelists. And then we'll have a question and answer session. Um, and we're going to do all of this within the next 60 or 56 minutes. So Liz, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, James, and thanks for joining us. And thank you everybody online for joining us and to our panelists for being with us today. It's so great to be here, to be sharing the forum with you for another forum. Um, and I wanna say thank you to all of you who have given your support to the forum in the past by attendance or in many other ways. And for those of you here today who may be planning on attending the forum this year, the conference just keeps growing each year and we wouldn't be able to make it the success it is without you. For those of you who might not know the SVRI, I just want to just give you a broad overview. We are a feminist, women-led, non-profit organisation established in 2003, recognising the deep inequities and the lack of resources that are dedicated to research on violence against women and violence against children in low middle income countries. And so our job is really to be redressing those deep inequities to advocate for more and better resources for research and evidence building in low and middle income countries led by researchers in low and middle income countries. And we work to achieve this through three, four pillars. Um, one is around building evidence, which some of you may know includes our SVI research grant, of which a call is launched annually. Strengthening capacity is some of our core work, and we work to increase the number of researchers and practitioners in low and middle income countries that are leading research and programs in low and middle income countries. Promoting partnerships, that's all about collaboration and including the forum around getting people together to build a community and a field that really work together to advance our overall shared goal of ending this, this type of violence in our world. It also includes our help desk, our weekly update and our knowledge hub. And we have over 10,500 members to whom we share a weekly update on what's going on in the field. So please, if you're not a member of the SVRI, join us so you can get to hear about the great work that's underway and to really share your work as well with people from around the world. And we also work to influence change. 
You may be familiar with our work around um, global priority setting as well as work on ethical funding. And to just remind you to advocate for more and better resources for research and practice in low and middle income countries. So let me talk about the forum, why we're all here today. The SRA Forum is the largest driven event in violence against women and violence against children fields with a really an unapologetic focus on low and middle income country efforts and work supported and informed by other work that's been done globally in high income countries. So we really love everybody from the world, the world to be attending. We see the forum as an opportunity to learn, share and connect on research and practice innovations, a time to be celebrating the joys of what we've learned and to think about what we need to learn more about or what isn't working as well as we would like. We host it every two years. And we've been running since 2009. And the, the Cape Town South Africa conference will be our eighth international in-person conference. And we are expecting over a thousand delegates to come over the five days to be connecting with each other, to be networking, sharing and learning. So please look at the website for more information and revisit this website if you need more um, web, webinar if you need more information or to be reminded of the information that we've been sharing with you today. Just to share a bit about the program, over the five days, we have one day dedicate, dedicated to capacity building. And these are pre-conference workshops. These conference workshops are um, really uh, a contribution by everybody in the field to help build capacity in our field. So people delivering these workshops are doing it pro bono. So for those people doing that, thank you so much. All the details on these pre-conference workshops are available online and there you are spoilt for choose. There's up to 20 workshops available for you to register and to join. After the pre-conference workshops, we will have three days of abstract driven conferencing. Just to remind you, abstract driven conferencing, that's really important to know. These abstract driven panels are uh, guided by the abstracts that we receive. So to get onto the program in these three days, you do need to submit an abstract. So get your abstract in. And then Friday is dedicated to participant driven events or, or satellite events or those events that you as partners or colleagues want to hold your own event at the conference, you can apply to hold one of those. Are there innovations that we've been introducing in the conference over time in addition to the abstract driven panels that integrate both practice and research, not just academic research, but practice-based research and policymaker thoughts and discussions around the research that's been presented. We have dialogic panels, and that, these were first launched in Forum 2022 in Mexico. And, and we brought these in because we wanted to provide opportunity to have that conversations that often are held outside the, the, the panel presentations in corridors. We want to bring those conversations into the plenaries, into the panels, where we can debate the really important discussions that are happening in the field. And we are going to be increasing the number of these in Forum 2024. We had two in 2022. And we have a survey out to you asking you to help identify some of those topics that you think should be included in those dialogic panels. And Lisa, would you mind just sharing the survey um, to that in the chat? So I invite you to please complete that survey. Tell us what you want to be discussing and debating. What's important that we really need to be thinking about as a field? We also have four minute presentations, which are a common standing, long standing feature of the forum. And this year, we're going to bring back a limited number of poster stands backed by popular demand. We also offer exhibition stands as um, uh, participant driven events, as I've net, uh, mentioned, networking and well-being, self and collected care are also really important and woven throughout the event. Because we really want to create a community and continue to use the forum as a space to, to build and strengthen existing relationships and to build new ones. There's lots of dance and there's lots of fun also at the conference. So what are some of our principles? Next slide, please. At the forum, we commit to principles of learning collaboration, where we come together to design solutions to end violence against women and violence against children, and to provide understandings of how to better serve survivors and victims of these forms of violence. We are committed to diversity, equality and inclusion, and so we do acknowledge that the power dynamics inherent in our research can sometimes be unhelpful 
And if we really bring them to the fore and, ex and acknowledge them and try to address them by ensuring that people from low and middle income countries, from diverse groups and voices are, are at the forum, as well as people at the forum are able to engage in their own languages through provision of bursaries as well as interpretation services is one way we try to ensure diversity, equity and inclusion. We also inform, um, award a forum prize to the best young researcher and practitioner at the SVRI to acknowledge the importance of building new, um, new researchers and practitioners coming into the field and to support them to do that. So what have our delegates said about the forum? The next slide shows us some of the things that we've been hearing back from our delegates. I'm not going to go through this slide, but know that every forum we do an evaluation and from that evaluation, we hear what people are saying, what they're learning and what they, and we really use that feedback to both inform um, next forums, but also to think through what do we need, need to know more about to help ensure that the forums are a space that is building community, building knowledge and a proper, an, an opportunity to be sharing knowledge. So why is South Africa? Historically, we've always held every second forum in South Africa. As you know, well maybe you don't, but organising a conference at this scale with a small team is hard work. And so having it in South Africa where the SRI is headquarters helps us to ensure we use local insights and relationships. It's also not a difficult place to, for people um, coming from the diaspora from around the world to get visas um, and it provides a relatively affordable space to be holding events like this for people from coming around the world. It also helps our team's well-being and um, make sure we are able to have the energy to continue to provide this really excellent and important event for the field. So what are the themes for the conference this year? We do a lot of work in thinking through how, how to one, develop these themes and what these themes are. The themes are built on the outcomes of previous forums as well as many other processes and consultations with members and partners and I really want to thank those of you who really gave your time to think through these themes, what they should be, what they shouldn't be, as well as for giving feedback at previous forums and, and ensuring that these themes are what people are wanting to see and discuss and debate at the conference. The process was really collaborative and, and iterative. So the forum themes of this year are understanding violence against women and children in their multiple forms, the prevention and response research and programs for violence against women and children, advancing our science on how to do this research and program development better, methods and measures and tools, as well as response and prevention programs focusing on perpetration of violence against women and violence against children and men who use violence. We have a theme around child sexual violence as well as integration of mental health, self-care and collective care into research and practice. So please do visit the themes page as there are many, many sub areas under these themes that really incorporate a wide range of topics. So if you don't see your theme or topic within these themes, do not let that prevent you from submitting an abstract because the session tracks within the conference are guided by the abstracts we receive. So please submit abstracts because that helps us develop the program. And if you don't have an abstract submitted, you aren't having, a, you don't, that limits your opportunity to even get onto the program. So please submit your abstracts. And there's time. So abstract submissions, the important things. Abstract submissions are now open and the link to the submissions will be shared in the chat if it hasn't already been done so. Abstracts are due on the 19th of February 2024, so there still is time to submit your abstract. Unfortunately, we can only receive abstracts currently in Spanish, French and English. If we have more funding, we could receive more uh, in, in different languages, but that's what we have the capacity for right now. And the different types of abstracts that we are looking for are re on, on research and the science of doing research on violence against women and violence against children. We also have um, a program and practice-based knowledge abstract form. So please do think about considering um, submitting abstracts on your work around program and practice. So, and, and when you're submitting abstracts, think about the abstract length. You only have 350 words to really succinctly pull together what your work is on and make a compelling argument as to why people really want to hear about your work. 
These abstracts are sent out to blind review to two different abstract reviewers who are thinking through, or maybe even more sometimes, who are going to think through when they are evaluating your abstract, the relevance of your abstract to a conference theme, area of debate currently in the field. Um, we also be looking at the objectives and uh, are the objectives clear and well presented in your abstract? Um, have you presented your data analysis and methodology clearly? Or the way in which your program has developed, is it linking to a theory of change, for example? What is it trying to shift and how is it working to shift um, or improve um, the, um, and so on, and prevention of violence against women and children? And what is the significance of your program policy um, findings? And finally, does it provide recommendations for future projects, policy making and funding? And just to show you the 11 um, in the next slide, the types of workshops that are available. We have over 20 workshops and um, they're, they're, you're spoilt for choice and you can decide which ones you want to attend by um, applying online. It does cost a small amount of funding, but not a lot. It helps us cover the cost of the renting of the room because as I said earlier, People providing and delivering these workshops are doing pro bono for their contributions to field building. So again, deep gratitude to those folk. And other important dates. Early registration closes on the 29th of February. We have um, standard registration opening from March to September 2024. Then that, that will then go into late registration where it gets more expensive. We do have discounted rates for low and middle, low and middle income country based delegates. And please do um, think about having an exhibition stand where you can really showcase your work and share it in the exhibition hall. It's a really fun and vibrant space. You can use your exhibition stand to share your work, use it as a place to host events, to invite people to come to um, your event to see what you're doing and certain other things that you want to be sharing. Participant events um, applications are also open and they're um, um, handed out on a first come first serve basis. So please do put your applications in as soon as possible because they fill up pretty quick. And then finally, how can you, if you're thinking of wanting to support the forum and become a partner and ensure diversity inclusion, we offer a numerous number of opportunities to support and sponsor the conference. And this will include having your logo and be viewed as a partner on forum materials. These opportunities including include contributions to bursaries, ensuring low and middle income country folk can be at the event, supporting young researchers to, um, and practitioners to attend the conference, supporting self-care and well-being activities um, to address vicarious trauma and just really providing opportunities for people working in this field to get support and care as they're attending this event. Um, to support language justice through supporting funding um, and supporting or funding interpretation, as well as just giving support for form quorum costs. And just to note, if you support more than 10 registrations from one organization, this automatically qualifies you as a conference partner. So please join us and please do feel free to ask us any questions or write to us at, SRI, at forums at sri.org if you'd like to support the forum in any other way. So I'd really like to thank you and now hand back to James to continue and to hear from our wonderful panelists. Thank you very much. Liz, thank you so much. Um, that was great. And there's a lot of information there. So any participation, any participants on this webinar, please, um, if you have specific questions, put them in the chat as we're um, starting this panel. So um, as I mentioned, we have, uh, quite a diverse and, and experienced panel from across both Africa and Asia. Um, their full uh, bios are going to be put in the chat now. And let's see, we see the screen uh, with everyone. Uh, um, but let me just start and um, introduce uh, Naima Abrams from the Medical Research Council in South Africa. Naima, if you don't mind saying who you are and um, then we'll we'll launch this panel. 
Sure. Good uh, morning, good evening, afternoon, everybody. Hello to everyone. I'm very excited reading all the names of the people as they introduce themselves. So I'm um, very excited and thank you very much um, for inviting me. So I am Naima Abrams. I've been a gender-based violence researcher for more than 30 years. I am the director of the Gender and Health Research Unit at the South African Medical Research Council. I am based in Cape Town and I have attended every one of the forums since the start. Um, so I'm a big, big fan. Uh, thanks, thanks, James. Wow. So, I mean, you've been involved with the forum since the start and you've attended so many over the years. Um, how do you think the SVRI Forum has influenced the direction or the focus of research on violence against women and violence against children in the field? Um, yes, yeah. So I think when I was asked to speak um, at the webinar, I started to reflect and I thought, you know, what would my world as a researcher in gender-based violence have been like if there was no forum? And that made me really realize um, in, a, in a much more deeper way how, uh, how much the forum has influenced not just my work, but the body of work and the field of gender-based violence research and the knowledge that we have generated has come because lots of SVRI and its forum has really been a platform. It's been uh, the facilitator to bring researchers together, to bring people together who were working on the same thing, but very separately before. And the forum brought that together. And then to, with combining our knowledge, our work, we have really been able to move the field and we have started to see change. Um, Obviously, every researcher um, who, who has contributed has done that. But I believe the forum really has facilitated us working together. We couldn't do it individually. We couldn't do it on our own, in our own countries or our own little regions. Uh, the forum really has brought the global world in terms of violence research together and has made sure we shared our ideas, we shared our knowledge, used it, um, not just at the forums, but through the many other tools that Liz has introduced us to. So um, I absolutely believe, and I know I've been there all the time. I have grown up as a researcher with SVRI. Uh, we've grown together. I'm, um, I'm now considered a senior researcher, and I believe that SVRI um, and the forum have really facilitated and assisted me um, in getting, but I think the most important thing is the change we're seeing, James. The the change we are seeing in how research has has assisted the change in women's experiences of violence and children's experience. We're starting. I mean, at the forum is where we heard um, Nicaragua is an example. Very early when we started, Nicaragua was one of the first countries to use the WHO questionnaire. 20 years later, we heard um, at the forum Mary Elspeth showing us how that same measurement has shown how Nic uh, violence has decreased in Nicaragua. My own work on femicide has also over 18 years show change. So I absolutely believe uh, the forum has played a big role. Thank you so much. And, and you know, full respect to the the institutional memory the the history that you're telling us and i must say i mean yes the the core of the forum is about research and and evolving the research agenda and seeing how that's happened over the years is quite important but you know it's not only for researchers right so i'm going to jump from south africa to kathmandu and ask benita if you if you can please introduce yourself uh, to the, the webinar. Thanks, James, and hello, everybody. My name is Benita Sresta. Uh, as James mentioned, I'm based in Kathmandu, and I am with Prevention Collaborative. 
Uh, my work has been mostly focused on SPCC, violence prevention, social norms programming as a practitioner. And as collaborate, at Collaborative, I do uh, like capacity strengthening and technic provide technical support to our partners in different interventions. And yeah, I have to mention that today, I'm very, very glad to be part of this conversation and to help kick off this year's forum. Thank you so much, Benita. So if I can ask you as a practitioner with your practitioner hat on, um, and you know, someone that's been part of the forum over the years, from where, from your perspective, what impact can practitioner voices have in the discussions at these international events, such as the forum? Yeah, so SBRI, I believe, is one of the biggest forums in this field, right? And this is where we can connect with the researchers, practitioners, and everybody. Like just like Neva just mentioned, like you know. Uh, like who, uh, whoever, like, you know, working in the field of violence prevention and response, like, you know, we usually find them there. So I first attended this forum in 2015 and have been a part of it since. And since then, it has grown so much because I remember the first one that I attended and I thought it was really research focused, especially for, for me, like, you know, as a core practitioner. But then since then, I feel like there has been a, shift every year and now like there are more practitioners so more people like me coming from the core implementation background and it doesn't feel like too much research anymore like but a good balance of both and to respond to your question um having such a forum to share our own experiences and learnings with the world as a practitioner or as an activist i believe is really empowering it reminds you that all that work you have been doing is just as important and people are interested in it, right? So it makes you feel part of that community. And also having a chance to interact with other practitioners and researchers and academics and hearing their thoughts on your work and also to learn about their ongoing work is not something that regularly happens. So this feels like an important exchange to me, which SBRI has been facilitating. Um, in my experience, like first, platforms like these provide an opportunity for everybody to share and learn. But not just that, I, I feel like it provides a space also for networking and new collaborations. So people from different backgrounds can come together to work on common issues and agendas and come up with solutions together, right? So. It's, it's beyond just evidence generation and sharing and learning. Uh, whether like we are researchers or practitioners or activists working on violence prevention, I believe that all of us, we have like the same end goal, right? But we may think about it differently sometimes. So I feel like such voices and sharing in these platforms are very critical to develop that common understanding agree on the priorities and to have a language that all of us can use for our collective efforts towards the goals that we all want to achieve. Thank you so much, Benita. I mean, it's it's true that, you know, this is not, we, you know, we all have uh, maybe labels that we attach to our, our professional careers, but, um, you know, I, I think we do all wear multiple hats. Like, and the SVRI is beginning to reflect that so much to me. It's not just for researchers. It's not just for activists or practitioners. It's, you know, it's for for um, the field to come together and to synthesize learning across those sort of silos. Um, I'd like to jump back to Africa um, to my old colleague, Sunita, and uh, from UN Women. And to talk a little bit about, you know, those of us in international organizations like the UN or the development banks, like we do help to drive priorities in the field. And we talk a lot about policy and, and policy making. So Sunita, if I can ask you to introduce yourself, and then I want to talk to you a little bit about that role that you're in now. Sure. Thank you, James. So I'm Sunita Kaminya. I'm the regional policy specialist. Ending Violence Against Women with UN Women East and Southern Africa, based in Nairobi, Kenya. I see a lot of uh, fellow Kenyan um, 
uh, participants on this call, and that's great. Um, and I've had the privilege of participating in three of the forums over the years, so also been able to see a nice trajectory of how it's evolved and excited to share some reflections from that. So, Sunita, I mean, from your role as a policy specialist or involved with policy making, what makes the SVRI Forum a unique and impactful platform for those that attend, from your, in your opinion? So, from my experience, I would say that it, the intentionality behind how the forum is established and created. So, the space that we see at the forum is really, you can see this intentional cultivation of opportunities for individual learning and reflection, the exchange that others have spoken about between practitioners, researchers, policymakers, donors, thinking about, you know, having conversations on, on the issues from different and beyond a single vantage point, which I think is really a benefit because often we're coming into the space with that policy hat on, with the engagement with member states or regional bodies, our civil society partners, but but again, then within the UN system, thinking about how are we addressing issues of addressing violence against women, violence against children, but really this idea of connecting and building community with the diversity of actors that make up the ecosystem of ending, ending violence and violence against children. So I think that is one piece that's really rich. A second element I would say is that in the content of what is shared at the forum, we are getting exposed to really a wide breadth, but also depth of learning around how best we can um, address this, these issues. And it's not only about the emerging research and evidence, but also around processes for programs, not only in terms of how we design um, and how we take forward the learning in, into practice, but also within our organization. Um, and I would say there's also the opportunity to connect with those behind the evidence. Often at forums or conferences, you hear this amazing content, but then you don't always have that space to have that follow-up conversation to say, how can I connect to this? How do I actually bring this into, into, my own, into my own work? So I would say from my own experience, that knowledge gained has really stayed with me well beyond the forum. And then the third point I would just highlight is that it's so energizing and it does reflect, as Liz started out with, the feminist values that do underpin the work on ending violence against women and violence against children. It's participant informed. It's been evolving to meet the changing needs, to be more inclusive. Um, and it does offer those entry points. So as a policymaker or all any participant to really engage from wherever you're positioned within the ecosystem of, of ending these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Sunita. I must uh, really concur with your points. I mean, I I am always so energized by participation in the forum. And because of what our three panelists have been saying so far, I mean, the diversity, the thought-provoking research, the connecting the dots across different areas of the field, really, I think I've generated new thinking and ideas at each forum that's informed my work for the two years in between. And I'm always inspired and really like recharged after each forum. So I I really appreciate what you're saying. So I, I if you may remember, Liz mentioned a little bit about how the forum has been evolving um, its outreach and participation of young participants, including young researchers. There's the Young Researcher Award that's given out. Um, and we also are encouraging more young practitioners. Um, so if I could jump back from Nairobi in Africa, back to Asia and my uh, adopted city, Manila, where um, both Adesti and I are right now. So Adesti, um, I, I, you have the distinction and the honor of being representing the young practitioner <laughs> cohort. Um, I'd like you to introduce yourself, please, to the, the webinar. Thank you so much, James. Um, yeah, so my name is Adeste Dilawan. I am with World Hope International. We are um, an international NGO providing services, anti-trafficking um, services to survivors of online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. So we're providing capacity strengthening to government agencies and other NGOs and um, also mental health services for the survivors who were impacted by this form of sexual violence at the same time prevention campaigns in 
local community. So I'm very much excited to share my experience during my first ever attendance in the SVRI Forum back in 2022. Thank you, Odessi. Um, So, you know, as <laughs> reflecting on your experience at the forum, <laughs> Can you tell us uh, how it's helped shape your work a little bit? And maybe as a follow-up, what you'd like to see at the next SVRI in terms of engaging young people or young researchers and practitioners? Thank you, James. Um, before before attending, before heading to Mexico back in 2022, I, I really have this question in mind where uh, because we're dealing with an emerging form of sexual violence, which is technology facilitated, I've always had this bugging question like, what would actually work for this vulnerable population? Because there's not a lot of literature out there, specifically the trafficking version of it. Like, what would work in terms of facilitating their healing and recovery? So that was the question I had in mind going there. And definitely didn't disappoint um, the SVRI Forum is one of the most impactful conferences that I've ever attended. Um, definitely played a role in shaping and enhancing my work, um, working with um, survivors of sexual abuse and exploitation, specifically children, particularly in the re realm of mental health interventions for survivors. Um, it was an eye-opening experience which offered a valuable opportunity to stay informed about the ever-evolving practice within the field. What I love most about the SVRI Forum is that um, it's, it strongly emphasizes on marrying research and practice, which is what we're trying to do in our work here as well. So given the dynamic nature of violence against children field, <clears throat> the forum served for me as a crucial platform to remain abreast um, on the current trends and evidence-based practices that are instrumental in facilitating recovery of survivors. I attended several sessions, um, specifically on trauma interventions and on technology-facilitated sexual violence, which provided me with a deeper understanding of this intricate and multifaceted um, sexual violence form. And um, since there's not a lot of studies on <clears throat> technology facilitated sexual sexual abuse um hearing a few of these presented during the forum was really very helpful the insights i gained particularly on the findings and recommendations um i've taken those into heart and tried to integrate them into our prevention and intervention strategies and it not only broadened also my perspective, but also equipped me with innovative and evidence-based approaches to address the complexities of support, supporting survivors in their journey towards healing, since it's it really is a tedious one. It, it should be supported by, by um, research findings. Incorporating the forum's insights into the work that I was doing was proven to be transformative. The awareness of emerging issues and evidence-based practices has allowed us to adopt and enhance our um, intervention programs, our prevention campaigns, ensuring that we are providing at the forefront of providing um, effective support to the survivors. And uh, personally, it also contributed to the overall advancement of our organization's mission to combat sexual violence and advocate for the well-being of survivors. Now, um, moving on to 2024, I would like to see, definitely I'd love to see more young researchers and practitioners in the next forum. I'm hoping there will be more opportunities, uh, specific opportunities of networking and linkages for them. And perhaps it would also be good, I think, to ensure that uh, the panels, the keynote speakers, and discussions would include diverse population, which should include also young voices from values, backgrounds and regions to have more inclusive and comprehensive dialogue on um, violence against women and children. And um, I think perhaps um, institut instituting more awards or recognitions specifically for outstanding contributions by young researchers and practitioners would entice them also, since it's going to motivate them to actively participate and contribute in the field. Mm, lastly, perhaps expanding and promoting mentorship programs within the mm -hmm. forum and establish connections between experienced professionals like 
like uh, the ones here in, in our distinguished panels um, and young researchers to create supportive environment for, for mentorship, guidance, and networking as well. Thank you, James. Thank you so much, Adesti. And I think that's, you know, it's really music to the ears of the SVRI, what you're saying about engaging young practitioners and researchers. And I know those attempts have been uh, evolving over the last few forums. So I hope at the next one, you'll see um, more of your recommendations put into practice. I also want to reflect on what you're saying about, you know, tech facilitated GBV. And I, I hope that when you're in Cape Town at the next forum in October, you'll see the evolution of the research around this, this theme. Going back to what Naima was saying at the beginning of this discussion about you know, the, the, the forums being a sort of a, um, a place marker for the evolution of thinking and research and how that grows in an iterative fashion. I know it, it seems like a new field, but there is a lot of research out there and is growing. And so it will help our thinking um, consolidate around that issue over the over time. So hopefully we can uh, we, we can um, check in on that at the next forum on where the research is on specific topics. I just want to um, go back to all of our panelists. I, I just in the in the interest of time, I'm going to ask you a very, if you can respond very quickly, um, and I'll go in the same order. So starting with you, Naima, um, for first time attendees of the forum, what are your top tips to make the most out of their conference experience? Like you're a, an old hat, so you must have a lot of lessons learned over the years. Over to you. Uh, yeah, and you want me to be quick, right? <laughs> okay, well, so <laughs> yes. It's a networking opportunity. And with networking comes collaboration. And that's what it did for me. Do you, you don't need to sleep even at this conference. This is the conference where you have a two hour lunch break. The food is great, but it's exactly so that you can use that opportunity to connect and speak. Be bold. If you're a young researcher like I was, you don't want to put up your hand after presentation so that everybody hears what you want to ask. Go up, stand in that line. Researchers like myself love people to come up to us and ask that they work. So be bold and um, go up and ask that question. Introduce yourself. Um, you will get an email later in the year or somewhere, people, somebody saying, we meet at SVRI. I'd like to collaborate with you. Um, and that's how the connections happen. So use that opportunities, uh, please. Um, the other, my other, I had a couple of tips which I thought about. Um, so the the other tips is that look at the research agenda. The SVRI uh, overall has developed an amazing deep thinking res uh, uh, research agenda. Look at where you fit in. Look at who are the people. Um, they have this app uh, which they will give to you, and you connect with people through that app. Find the person. These are it, it's it's a very flat hierarchy. There isn't. I've been to other conferences in health where there is a, you know a certain person is a prof or something like that. This it doesn't happen at SVRI. People are kind. They're caring. They love you to come up and ask them questions and to connect with them. And that's uh, the and, and it's run mainly by women, and that's why this feminist way of helping and supporting each other you get throughout the conference. So use opportunities all the time. That's my top tip, James. Thank you so much, and um, yes, I agree with everything you've said. I. I want to turn quickly to Benita. If you same question, do you have anything to add um, on tips for first time attendees? Uh, like I would just uh, agree to everything that Neema just mentioned. Like you know, I feel like this forum, this platform is sort of a leveler, right? People like there, you meet people like who are at the start of your career, right? And then. There are people with decades of experience working in the field, known global experts. And 
the best part is like you know it doesn't matter where you are or like from really or who you are uh, i feel like everyone is equally welcome to the space get to be in dialogue with people with so much experience which is great right so my tip would be uh, if you are a first timer then do not hesitate like reach out to people as naima mentioned like you know that you want to have chat with and just start the conversation i've found this to be a really really safe space so go for it that would be my thing thank you um sunita what would you like to add Sure, I would have three small uh, additions. So take time to plan the sessions you're interested to attend, the people you want to meet, as Liz was saying, the questions you want to explore, because there's so much offering that it can, it's the, using the time before is really helpful. Consider also how you're going to take care of your energy over the five days, because it is an immense, it's like a festival, I would say almost. And the forum does provide a lot of well-being spaces. And because there will be a lot of people, more than a thousand, I think it's really, it's really, which is so exciting, it also can be daunting. So just be mindful of how you're going to plan your energy. And then third would be, as Benita was saying, trust yourself, be confident to engage fully in the forum. All of us are part of the ecosystem and bring valuable contributions and perspectives. So really um, trust yourself to show up in, in all that you can. Thanks. Thank you. And lastly, uh... Again, over to you, Adesti. Anything from your experience of last time that you'd share with Thank newcomers? Thank you, James. I think they've mentioned most of it already. Really important to just network, 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 be confident, be bold, reach out to people. Um, as, as they've said, it's a safe space. These are people with similar mindset and passion. So it's it's going to widen your professional circle at the same time. Um, help you out with the programs or other activities that you're working back in your home country. One thing perhaps that I would like to add is for for participants to maximize the well-being activities. You know, like sometimes when we are in this in this kind of work, we oftentimes neglect ourselves. So use the conference also <clears throat> sort of like a, a break for yourself, join the well-being activities and take care of yourself. You use it also as a sort of rest for, for you as well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to all of you. I mean, this is such a great panel and you're not quite off the hook yet because I want to open it up to questions from all the participants. I see we have 113 people on, so there must be some questions. And um, I'm going to ask uh, Liesl if you can help me highlight any of the questions from the chat at this point. Uh, Liesl, over to you. Thanks, James. We have a question in the Q&A box on, um, from Godfrey saying, how can I be supported to the conference if I can't afford? Um, Liz, do you maybe want to speak to the bursaries? Um, sure. Thank you, Liesl and Godfrey. Thanks for the questions. Look, um, Godfrey, we work really hard every year to fundraise for bursaries. So if there's anybody out there that really want to sort of help us support making sure that people from low and middle income countries or people that can't afford to attend the conference can get there. We're welcome to any contributions. We prioritize for bursaries, um, people that have had abstracts submitted, young researchers um, and um, practitioners that are wanting to attend and cannot afford it, or those people that otherwise would love to be there but can't be there. And so to, first of all, prioritize putting an abstract in, and two, um, we will be putting out a bursary call for applications uh, in a few months' time. So look out for our, join the update and look out for the call for applications for bursaries. So that's one way of getting to the conference is through our bursary programs. If you have other funders that you might want to be, uh, that you're close to or you want to really apply for funding, reach out to us and we can try, try and um, provide some kind of letter of support for your attendance because we want everybody there that can get there who otherwise couldn't be there. So let us know how we can help. We have limited funds, but we are that's one of our key areas in which we try to make sure that we have funding for. So apply is the answer and put in an abstract and join us. Back to you, James. Thanks, Liz. Um, I encourage participants to ask the panelists other questions. We have one um, 
do did we consider making the conference a hybrid one? I think that might be back to you, Liz, if you have any thoughts on that. I do. We have. We uh, we consider it every every conference, and um, what we're finding is one there is a real value of it having it face to face. Um, we do try and at times when we have funding, we have to fundraise for most of it. The the registration costs do not cover the cost of a conference of this size. So we do have to fundraise. So we have at times been able to have enough money to have the plenaries, for example, um, live live streamed. At this stage, we don't have funding for a hybrid uh, um, event. Um, we might be able to live stream some of the plenaries, but we are always investigating it. But our priority is getting people together face to face every two years. And so that's what we're trying to do. But it's always part of our consideration and we will continue to consider it. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Thanks, James. Thanks. Um, Liesl, I saw something pop up about a little bit about the logistics. Like was the, is the conference going to have um, offering breakfast? Is Are we gonna have breakfast offered at the conference? Liz, do you want me to answer that? Yes, please. Okay, sure. Um, so, the conference package will include teas and lunches. So that's morning tea, lunch, and then afternoon tea. What does happen though, we also have a, a gala dinner um, the night of, well, the Wednesday usually. So what does happen is we've got a lot of participant driven events running throughout the conference. So generally they have breakfast events, um, which you can join. So then, you know, those types of meals are also provided. So we also, you know, there's never, never too little to eat. So, um, but no, um, in the conference package itself, um, breakfast is not offered. It's teas and lunches, and then the gala dinner, and, and, the, and, the, and the opening welcome event. Lisa, if I can ask you to say a little bit more about um, booking for rooms, there's a question on how uh, we are organizing accommodation or hotel bookings. Like, are there links provided, or where they are? Yeah, so um, the conference registration fee doesn't cover travel and it doesn't cover accommodation. Um, we don't have, at this stage, accommodation up online um, because we need to go through a vetting process for that, if I'm correct, Liz. You're welcome to jump in. Um, what we can do is they, they are quite a range. So what we can share is like the, the main tourism sites for people to go and look at various types of accommodation. Um, you know, there's a lot of Airbnbs, a lot of booking.com um, venues that people can look at around. So it also, because we're having it at a conference center, we just try and make it easier for people to be able to book within kind of like their range, their budget um, to make it easier. So what we can do is we can arrange with our organizer to just put on our website, just some general, general links to tourism sites that offer accommodation. Liz, do you want to add to that? No, that's great. Thank you. No, accommodation is available in Cape Town on various options at various prices. So do look um, at the links that we have provided at, at, uh, on the on the website for different ideas. Okay. Um, any thoughts from either of you or uh, about opening sessions or panels to in solidarity with those in Ukraine and Gaza? That's a really great question. Thank you, James. And we would really invite you to respond to the survey and what we want to be seeing at the conference in terms of the opening plenaries. And um, so, and we will be looking, I mean, I think it's a great question. And so please engage with us on things that we should be considering at the conference in terms of content. Um, so thanks. Back to you, right. James. So it's a participant driven agenda to some extent. I mean, it's of course it's abstract driven, but also um, there are know, yeah, yeah, there are sessions that we want your engagement on. So please please respond to the survey. So Liz, uh, sorry, Liz will just put the survey back up in the chat. Um, you know, I know we just have a few minutes remaining. I don't see any other questions in the Q and A um, queue. So um, maybe I would just uh, say one thing or two. I mean, I, you know, I am the moderator, but I'm going to take the space to say <laughs> I've been to many uh, forums over the years as well. And 
I the the best metaphor that I've heard to describe the SVRI forums is that it's the campfire around which our field gathers. And I really think that's beautiful because it's like, you know, there's so much knowledge and passion and we're gathering around it, telling stories, learning from each other and keeping each other warm in this in this field that's not always easy to do. So I really appreciated that when I heard that. And um, I, I'd like to turn to Liz for a few uh, closing remarks. And uh, before that, to thank once again, our distinguished panel, thank you uh, to all of you for your time and giving your, your inputs and insights about the forum. I hope we've inspired everybody to do their best to attend across Asia and Africa. So Liz, over to you, thanks so much. Thank you, James. And thank you, James, for your always excellent hosting skills. And thanks, Liesl, for bringing us all together and convening this really inspirational panel. Naima, Benita, Sunita, and Adesti, um, thank you for your thoughtful reflections and really excellent tips for newcomers. And so very, very important. I want to really thank everybody for coming to the webinar. We've had over 100 plus folk um, online with us today at any one time. I really, as James said, I really hope that this has inspired you to come to this campfire, to, to come to the forum. Um, Barbara Sher, she's a life coach. She often says that isolation is a dream killer. And our dream is to end violence against women and violence against children or gender-based violence. And we can only do that together. And so we need to connect um, and to make amazing things happen. And the forum is really an important event to keep us talking, networking, learning and sharing. So please come. And in between, keep the conversations going and reach out to us if you have any additional questions. And we look forward to seeing you at the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much and see you in Cape Town. See you in Cape Town. Bye, everyone. <laughs>